It's very brightly colored and it's very loud. And it's fun for a while. We want to be free to, to do what we want to do. We're Muhammad Ali and Sonny Barger, the president of Hells Angels. This is 109.5. Okay, I don't normally do a video intro, but this next podcast is with Russell Banks, the actor. And, uh, yeah, a bit of an up-and-down podcast, so I thought I'd explain. We started, what, 10, 10 days ago, two weeks ago. We did half the podcast. Uh, my chair collapsed. I smashed my head. I was all right. And uh, we thought we'd uh, complete it a week later. So, yeah, halfway through the podcast, there's a bit of a chair collapse. It carries on. Uh, so I just wanted to do a bit of an intro. Russell is... Uh, he's an actor, he was, he's a British bloke, he was based in Bangkok a long time, done a number of movies, adverts, drama, uh, he's back in the UK now. Uh, so we talk about his acting career, uh, what he's up to, and then if you wait right till the end, we've got a nice little tag on of an eight minute, I think it's about eight minute, uh, little short movie that Russell wrote and uh, produced in his loft just recently, a few days ago. So um, yeah, wait till the end of the podcast and you'll see that. Great, enjoy it. Hey, Russell. Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to the podcast, mate. How are you doing? How you doing, buddy? Been a while. I'm good. Yeah, it's, um, it's just the sun's kind of going down here. Sun's up there. Where, where are you now? Where, where are you today? I'm in London. London at the moment. Yeah. Loving it. So, Loving it, of course. 20, 2021, New Year, but yeah. not really that it's any different to last year. I think we're probably facing the same set of circumstances in a different order. I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah, a little. We're in lockdown here, but it's what it is. We're used to it now, so it's all good. Yeah, exactly. That's the attitude to have. I think it's good for writers as well. And I know you've been, as we've been chatting on Messenger, you're you tend. It looks like you're up. You're a bit of a nocturnal individual at the moment, if I'm not wrong. I, most of the time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm uh, all about the nighttime hours. And, I always have. Always, I always have been. I, I prefer to write at night anyway. So, yeah. How are you doing anyway? I didn't ask. I'm good. Yeah, yeah I've just been, um, I mean, we're up in Pi. It's like kind oh. of a bit of a village, really. No. But very, I mean, I can't complain. We've been really fortunate up here all of last year. But it, I suppose it does, you know, the whole kind of not being able to travel. I mean, they've just locked down the borders again here or not all of them, but some of them. So I can't go to bank. I was meant to go to Bangkok this week. Can't go, which is a bit annoying. But same kind of attitude, really. It is what it is, you know. It's yeah. um, yeah. It's okay. That's life. Well, can't you got to adapt? Adapt rather than complain. I think it's probably the best best thing to do. Right. So. Yeah, been all right just to catch our thoughts, see what we want, have a little think about life, all that jazz. Been all right. Exactly. So what are you writing then? Are you just, when you say you're up late writing, are you writing something particular? Are you just kind of yeah. writing stuff? No. So uh, the last year, well, I'm working on quite a few different projects. I'm, I'm kind of ticking between one and another. Um, the main one is uh, psychological thriller horror, which I'm on the second draft of that one. Um, so I've been working on that one for quite a while. And then, uh, semi-autobiography tv series but like coming of age so i wouldn't like want to play myself in that it was just a something like that so i've been working on that and then uh, a couple of silly other ones yeah and what do yeah. you do you know you're primarily I, I say you're primarily an actor but you've done quite a bit of writing what what do you prefer do you prefer both do you for, you know, you like to do both, one to the other, or what? Um, it's a tough one now, because if you'd asked me that years ago, it was always acting. Um, but I enjoy writing a lot. I enjoy it. I, I find it's very personal just to be at home, uh, just to gather your thoughts. And, you know, like when you're writing something, a lot of the people, they're... they're, they're, they're little fragments of your past. Nobody's ever going to know that, but you know. So, so for instance, uh, on the project which I've, I've just started putting together this other project, and uh, there's a character in there which is, uh, and nobody will ever know that. But to me, it's somebody who 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 we lost a year ago. You know, so it's just it's nice to, you know, keep those memories alive in your writing, and before you forget at some point, not forget, but you know. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah. I I can totally relate. I mean, I love that 
process of screenwriting and, and well character writing and I know it's you know there are similarities when you're writing kind of story level but screenwriting particularly it's I think you really can dive into characters and I, I yeah. love that process do you work to a particular structure do you use you know people that there are there are the traditional structures there are people who like to kind of take it their own format do you work to a particular structure when you're writing a screenplay do you start off with a an outline do you yeah what, what's your method um so usually how i start a screenplay is uh i just start one sentence on each scene or just a word and then uh, i i won't start writing anything because i used to do that all the time just never finish scripts so i i usually just have one book of just any no, anything which comes into my head which i might think will suit this film and then I, I start with like a one to a hundred, one word or one sentence on each scene. And then the next, uh, I try and turn that into a couple of sentences and uh, and so on and so on until it's there. And then, but I won't, I won't do dialogue until the, the end. Um, and then what, what I do now is now I have like a little folder of anytime I hear somebody say something I like, I'm like, going to steal that motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then, so when, when you say you won't do dialogue to the end, sorry, mm -hmm. but but when you say you won't do dialogue to the end, you mean you, so do you work within a screenplay format though and, and write out scene description, yeah. what's happening, and then you go back and do dialogue? That's an interesting way to do it. Rather than writing, say, a treatment that is, you know, like when I wrote with Don, we, we did a mm -hmm. short treatment, then a really extended treatment where we dug into scenes and then we went straight into whatever the screenwriting software is i've forgotten but and then just wrote scene by scene description dialogue but what you're saying is you write you write scene description right the way through yeah. to the end and then go back and do the dialogue yeah and i don't do uh dialogue in chronological order it's just whatever mood you know i might have had a couple of glasses of red wine and being a little moody sad mood and we might be hitting a sad bit of the film or I might be might have just watched something silly and been in a silly mood. So yeah, just depends how I'm feeling. I love it. It's it's such a fun process. I remember when I was. It's a long time. And Richie and James are working on the latest uh, version of Dark Karma at the moment. Actually, so it's a long time since I've. It's probably been two two years, two and a half years. But I really do enjoy it. And that element of kind of conveying your own emotional content into different characters i i found if i have a glass of wine i'd often having a drink was good for writing but you'd have to go back and edit afterwards was always my process but it's a great yeah. it, it's a really fun uh fulfilling process going in and getting inside characters and using do you use parts of yourself i assume in every character right but you also differentiate yeah, or how do you try to do that uh all the time it's always uh either a part of me or or somebody i know Every uh, like everybody who <laughs> every character is some morph of somebody else, and they never know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and in most of the dialogue, so, uh, like most of the dialogue or the scenes, it's it's you know something what you've seen or you've been around or do you know what I mean? And then yeah, and then I have this other thing where when I'm stuck for ideas, I like to go in a take a bath, but I try and make it pitch black. So there's no light whatsoever. And then just lay in the bath and then like, I always fall asleep anyway. So then I'm like, am I falling asleep or am I not? And then I seem to get good ideas. Then that's a, that's a so place. Like, well, with, no, with no sound, nothing, just a, just, just like your own kind of there. cheap version of a flotation tank, but in your that, bathroom. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a good hint. So um, you, you wrote, so you co-wrote um, Who's Watching Oliver, right? You you yeah. wrote the screenplay or you co-wrote the screen screen you co-wrote it with Richie did so, you or with Ben Raymond wrote that script yeah um, originally I went to Richie uh, because I wanted to do a serial killer film he was up, straight up for it um, we started to work on that it was more more in the style of like Henry portrait of a serial killer that eighties movie type um, and then we brought Raymond Huber on board. And then he, he had the idea to change the Oliver character to more of a, like the Marty McFly, the father in Back to the Future, um, with the attire and, and making him more vulnerable. And yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's, the, well, he's the father 
let me get this right. He's the father that when he goes back and sees himself as a kid, right? He's the, yeah, when they're all, is it in the, he's the father in the 60s, right? When they go yeah. back to the, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, being Chris, Crispin Glover character. Yeah, okay. Right, yeah, kind of geeky and creepy, maybe, from memory. It's a long time since I saw the film. But there was also, and, uh, there's another film called Green Butchers, um, okay. which I favorite films as well. That one's, uh, it's a Danish movie, Mads Mikkelsen. Any horror fans, I suggest go and have a look at that. It's an amazing, but there is actually uh, a similar type of character in that film as well. So you, it's taken from loads of places. As yeah. films often are, right? As you know, I'm sure, yeah. I mean, there's, it's not plagiarism as such. It's kind of recreation of characters when you do this stuff. That we, I watched that film recently because I've been chatting to James. And Derek, Sorry, Ricky Bob. Gervais. And Derek, the Ricky Gervais show. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's like a horror version of Derek. I never thought about that. People did. Uh, people said, oh, yeah. It's like, did you copy a bit from him? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, never, I can see that. It's quite a... I watched it recently with my girlfriend. She was... All she kept saying through it was, did this show in Thailand? Was, did anyone see... I, I don't think it did, right? It was done for streaming anyway. But, or did it... Did you do any viewings in... Um, I don't know about Thailand. I know in... Uh, I know in Europe, it's still on HBO. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I know... Look, don't know it's years ago now isn't yeah it? i mean we it is a, a few years ago and it's just in my memory because we watched it recently but yeah. yeah that that character playing that character you know we you and i had a conversation a few years ago i remember you saying you know as an actor how much you love drama i think you said british drama and i can totally oh. relate to that we we watched loads of uh, we've run out actually of kind of those you know british crime drama series yeah, yeah. on netflix because i love them love the actor you're so drawn in and i could totally relate to you about you know that those sorts of characters however you play that character oliver so well i mean it's it is frighteningly um un, it's it's unnerving and unnervingly realistic you know where did you what what um what did you do to prepare for that you know where did you kind of take the inspiration for for that character i mean the laugh are, is what sticks in my head that kind of is he laughing is he nuts is it really funny you know what what where did you take hints for that how did you kind of practice for it and stuff it, it was a mixture a mixture of one uh, me and richie sat down and watched tons of serial killer documentaries so we we was catching little bits from there um yeah there was bits of input from Richie and Ray, and then uh, I used to get well, I mean, uh, you always get, but I, I get panic attacks, and, and uh, so then parts of that came from just how you know, when you're at the worst feeling, you know, so yeah. um, yeah, a big part of that came from just like thinking back to when I the first times I ever had panic attacks and feeling stuck and trapped and like going dizzy and so on. So a lot of that came into the film for sure. Um, definitely. Um, yeah. And then, and then it was a dark film to be around. So nobody enjoyed being on that set. Nobody did really. Um, it was a dark, dark, dark vibe. It wasn't like usually on films, you, you know, yourself, mm. everybody stood around, you're enjoying life. You're having a chat. Um, not a lot of that on that film. It wasn't, it wasn't that vibe. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, it's a... I mean, you can never tell from watching a film what the vibe might have been like on set, but it, it's hard to imagine there being a great vibe on that film just because of what was going on. But of course, that's nothing to do with the vibe on set, right? I mean, they're two very different no. things. So the vibe, vibe on set, I, ma I assume, was disconnected from the content of the film. It's just a... It's just no, happened not really. It was not a good vibe. Yeah, no. uh, but it did, it did definitely help that set because you know when you're in that environment where everybody's are tired and not happy and and it was a small crew that that was a the thing that was never like who's watching Oliver was tiny there was what, a handful of us so in between scenes it wasn't just you know it wasn't just the acting then it was like washing up all the blood and 
somebody had to take back all the equipment and somebody had to, and it just that everybody was tired, everybody was pissed off. It didn't have a good vibe. And it, it certainly, that pressure and stress certainly helped bring down the mood, which was good because in in the takes, you could kind of get that like, that, that's what I like to call it, that <laughs> vibe. Which it did, it had that, that vibe. And uh, yeah, it was just a weird, weird, funky, weird film, you know? Yeah, weird is definitely a, a good word, but it, for, I mean, the other thing is what, what you guys managed to do on on the budget you did was was yeah. really impressive. I mean that for me is, and I, I would just, I would assume a lot of that credit goes probably to Richie as a as as a director. Yeah. He, he's yeah. incredibly yeah. talented to take something um, and make something really good on a, on a slim budget, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, no, they the whole like the whole team done incredible on making it. You know, Richie's uh, ex Topaz, she was helping with the. Uh, with with like drawing the the artist stuff and uh, yeah, there was a, it was a nice and then Alex Boyesson, oh he was amazing the the sound guy um I don't know if you ever worked with him I, no he doesn't ring a bell so I, I assume I haven't yeah but uh, just amazing sound guy really can't like and that that's actually one of the things that everybody always says about like in the reviews and that people did praise the sound work. And that that was done. Alex Boyasson done an incredible job with the sound. Um, yeah, everybody and and you know, as much as certain things happen and you may not get on, you know, you have to give credit where credit's due. Like Raymond Huber also did a lot of hard work from the film. Um, so you know, it was a small team and a hard work in the film, and everybody played their part. You know. So how long have you been back in the UK, by the way? I didn't mm. ask you. I can't remember when we... We, we must have last caught, caught up in Bangkok, and it's probably now three, four years ago, right? You've been, you've been back a while, or...? No, okay. Well, yeah, now it is. I came back last Christmas. Yeah. Hello. You're frozen. Don't know whether you can hear me. Yeah, so have you. I... You there? Yeah, you're... Yeah, you're back. Hello. I'm here. Yeah, I can. I can hear you, but now you're frozen. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. No, I came back uh, last Christmas. Oh, so not that long ago, but I probably haven't seen you for a few years. So. Yeah. Um. So, what was the last thing you did in Thailand? Would it have been Would it have been Ghost House or the la- You were doing lots of small things, but Ghost House, I would assume, was the last. Was that the last kind of major production you did here? Yeah, the last big one was Ghost House, and then I did uh, Shark Island with, uh, oh my God, my brain's gone, I can't remember the people I did that with. There was uh, Jude, lovely, love Jude, um, Jan, uh, oh my God, I, I can't forget, I forgot the guy's name, the producer guy. Um, I did two two Shark films, um, yeah. Two shark films. That's not bad. Yeah. Most people, many people, don't even get to do one shark film. <laughs> well, the third. I've been I've been eaten by three sharks in films now. So, yeah, <laughs> that's something. It's a good claim to fame. Yeah, but so when, know, when fun little gigs. Yeah, when when did you? So you didn't. You started acting when you were in Thailand, right? You didn't. You were here for fifteen or so years. I think you were saying when we spoke before. But so you. You came into Thailand, but you you started acting when you were here, and now you're going to continue with it in the UK. I assume it's, you know, from yeah. speaking, I think it's it's where your heart is acting, writing. Um, yeah. what, what? How did you? How did you fall into it in in Thailand? How did it all come about? So originally, I I mean, it was one of them that I always wanted to do acting, just didn't didn't see it feasible, and you know, and I and I, I always suffered with stage fright when I was especially at the start so that was like an extra I mean still now if you if you got me to stand up in front of a room full of people and start talking I'd be like wouldn't enjoy it um so I came to Thailand originally came what 15 16 however long ago it was was doing my diving um working in a little beach bar on Koh Tao back in the day um then I worked in a school teaching 
And then uh, I think I first did a few extra jobs, probably with uh, Roy or somebody. Many on uh, King Narasuan, the one of the first ones of those I films. Yeah, yeah, I think I've seen one of them actually. Is David in it? Is yeah, David? Pro- yeah, David. One, one, one of the more recent ones. I think I saw one. Yeah, yeah, same here. He's he was. Yeah, yeah. I do. Well, yeah, he's. Um, I saw him in one of them. I think more recently, but yeah, it's a, and I, I didn't realize it was a Thai film with no English subtitles. I'm pretty sure. I watched at the movie, so I understood nothing, but it was still quite enjoyable. <laughs> so, with a. Uh... Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, so I did that and then uh, did start doing standing jobs, um, just set, like helping setting up the lights. So I did that on Formosa Betrayed, Street Fighter 2, uh, The Legends of Chung Lee 1, um, Hangover 2, Shanghai. Um, and there was one other, which I keep forgetting. It was a uh, Scott one, the Ridley Scott TV series that never got made properly. Um, so I did that for a few years. And then in between, I was still doing, uh, got some commercials and stuff. A lot of, still a lot of extra at the big, be- like at the beginning. And then, uh, yeah, then what? I'm trying to think. Then, uh, oh, then I went back to England and, uh, made a film with Jack Everett, which I'd wrote called Goodnight Gloria. Um, so I spent like, what, a year, eight months, nine months doing that. But Jack done most of it. <laughs> he was a director, he'd done most of that. Um, and that, that was, I mean, it, it's it's not a great watch, but it was a great experience. And Byron Gibson, do you know Byron? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know him. I, You know, he's kind of these people that if I bumped into him, we'd have a lot to talk about, but I don't know him. Great as I've never, yeah, I've never. He's he's in Only God Forgives, right? He's the guy yeah. who gets the daggers through the hands. Um, and I've seen him in a number of things. They did a that London gangstery movie, which I haven't seen yet, which was yeah. filmed here. Oh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what happened? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I bang my head. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> You froze and I just heard some noises. I was like, what happened? <laughs> That's the second time I've broken that chair. Is that what happened in the chair? I was like, where did you go? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, man. How you doing, mate? All right? All right. I'm all right. Back. Part two. Back it will part be... Two. For the listener or the watcher, it will just have, there will be no, no uh, five day gap like we just had. <laughs> no, no, uh, full of, yeah. But I got a sturdy chair, so that's good. It was a hard hit, wasn't it? Yeah, it was all right. It gave me a bit of a rattle, but it was, uh, I'm okay. No concussion. I had plenty of, uh, plenty of uh, rose wine at the weekend. So I, I um, yeah, it was okay. It just gave me yeah. a bit of a, you know, a bit of a bash on the head. It was like when you're at school and uh, you bash your head and you get that kind of like dizzy sick yeah. feeling. So, yeah, it was nothing too bad. It will teach me not to buy cheap plastic chairs from the 20 bar shop in, in, in my local Thai town. So, yeah. The one, isn't it? That's the one. Anyway, how's the writing going? What have you been up to in the last last week? Any any progress getting on with anything good? Yeah, Uh no bits and bobs. The writing's going well, um, and then um, yeah, planning a little short film just for fun. So I've been working on that. Yeah, just those two mainly. What's the short yeah. movie? Can you share it? Is it is it shareable or? Yeah, well, we're in lockdown, so uh, not a lot going on. So I was in the attic the other day, and it looked full of junk. And I was like, this would be quite good to shoot something up here. So I wrote, so I wrote a little script and uh, to do with death and all happy stuff like that. So uh, yeah, so hopefully going to shoot that next week, just on the Sony. And well, just with a with a few people, or just you set like a mono kind of movie. Just me, me and so, lockdown. So written, <laughs> written, written, <laughs> acted, me. produced. Look, I'll show you two sets. If I can find it. <laughs> 
Me and <laughs> you wanna join this is the supporting support is that the lead or is that the uh supporting antagonist or what? That's my uh do you know like castaway they have the ball. Yeah Wilson. That's my Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> And wait, you say short, you, any, are you talking like three minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes, yeah. is it? Five minutes, just keep me busy. And then also, uh, I found loads of old videotapes of uh, Thailand from when I was 20, 25. I'd, I'd like to say 24, 25. So I'm going to uh, project that on the wall and have that as a little backdrop going on. Yeah, my projector up in the attic. Awesome. I will. Well, I look forward to it. I'll share it on the the channel and with friends yeah. and stuff, and be could be good to see. So, it's interesting how th we did a little one minute sixty second movie actually about eight months ago as part of. Well, I think maybe longer when the initial lockdown happened. But it's been quite interesting. There's been a bit of a surgence of that type of content right during lockdown just because of the fact that people are locked down and have you been have you done any more of those or have you seen quite a bit of that happening um no i wrote 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 some and then i did some practice like monologues which i'd wrote and stuff like that nothing too much yeah yeah i yeah. did uh kind of think which and then i was out with the camera a lot just taking photos yeah yeah yeah, I've seen your photography. It's I think we talked about it very briefly, I think, from memory. Mm. But um yeah, it's impressive. It's I, I assume it does it come from the same kind of place of kind of creative interest in terms of I you do you you're not just taking you're not character photos though, you're doing all sorts, right? I've seen some good kind yeah. of landscaping ones. Yeah, just when just when it's with me and it's around. Sometimes uh before when it was like now with we're not allowed out so much but before i was going into central london at night and just taking pictures of randoms <laughs> um without them knowing and then uh yeah just some landscape stuff just whatever whenever i've got the camera or whenever whenever i'm in the mood <laughs> yeah 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 good way to do to it though, still. To fill, fill the time creatively yeah with the camera i'm still I only bought that one at like, and it's only a Sony A7. So that was like the first proper camera I've owned, anyway. So still, still just messing around with it, really. Yeah. I wanted to. Um, I was. I had a quick check of what we chatted before. Before we obviously chatted about um, who's watching Oliver, and you. We didn't get onto Ghost House. I'm pretty sure, and I wanted to talk to you about it. And that's a. Uh, Your internet's breaking up, or mine, one of our two's. You gone? I don't know if you can hear me. Hello? Yeah, I'm there. Are you there? I don't know whether that was me or you. I just dropped out. Yeah, you're back. I'm not sure if it was mine or yours, but uh, yeah, you were saying Ghost House? Yeah, how did Ghost... I haven't watched Ghost House, actually. Um, funnily enough, I have it on my list of films. I need, I, I've need. i got to watch a Thai film tonight um, because of another actor that we both know that's in, which is Half Hazard, which I can now watch on Amazon. I haven't watched uh, Ghost House, and I'll probably watch it at some point. I don't know which network it's on, but how did that all come about? And that film, from everything I hear, that film did pretty well, as horror kind of genre films do in, in Thailand, right? I mean, it. I heard that in the in the box office here it actually did quite well it that one done amazingly well in the box office i think in about 18 19 countries that done really really well um yeah i just cast for that one that one was out the blue cast for that directed by rich ragsdale lovely guy he's uh that, one, that was a really nice nice film to be a part of such a really cool cast and crew um yeah rich ragsdale uh he, he'd done a lot of music videos before. I think he was involved in uh, what's a motorcycle TV series. Uh, I don't know. I didn't watch it. But uh, there's an American motorcycle gang TV series. I know he'd done some episodes of that. Um, 
Yeah, and then they'd shot, it was a horror with Scout Taylor Compton as a lead. So she was a lead in the Rob Zombie Halloween. And then uh, James Landry Herbert, who's just wicked. He's uh, He was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood recently, the guy who had his teeth kicked out. But he'd also done Westworld. Yep. Stuff. And uh, yeah, that was a good film to be a part of. It was fun. It was a nice, fun gig. Um, and then uh, had that creep element. It, it done well. And it was all right. Yeah. I, yeah, I heard it. I was trying to get the numbers on it at one point because I was doing some analysis on films locally, but I never managed to get the numbers, but I heard it had done well. Mm. Um, and mm. I don't know, horror. Sorry, carry on. No, that's what, I mean, I was going to say horror is always the kind of safe, seems like the safe bet in terms of movies getting a return, right? From everything I've looked at, it's it's just one of those genres that people don't, you know, not, don't always look at the cast. They don't always look at the story until they get in there and watch it. It's, you know, horrors tend to make their money back. I think pretty much against any other kind of movie, really, the horrors are that do the best. Yeah, I think so. It's also, I mean, if it's done all right, you know, that people are always going to watch a horror, ain't they, at some point? You know, you're with a girl or whatever, watch a horror. Youngsters, watch a horror. Yeah, it's one of them that seems to do well. I think they're a bit right, ain't they? Yeah, well, I can't. It's funny, so I got my. I can't watch any horror with my girlfriend Sam, who's Thai. She won't watch any anything that's horror. She watch actually, but not if there's any kind of ghost elements to it. So mm. there was a Thai film, Shutter, and they made an American remake. That was that was a good horror film years ago. Very good. Mm. Mm, I haven't seen that Shutter Island. I've seen. I haven't seen Shutter. It's filmed. It's a Thai language film, is it? Yeah, it was with. Uh... I forgot the, uh, uh, there was a Thai actor in it. Yeah, Thai language film. So they made a, an American remake. It's a, it's about a guy who's a photographer, and then when he's developing the pictures, he can see the, the ghosts. But that one, that's one of the films, Thai films, which actually took off around the world. I think I'd watched that before I ever came to Thailand. Yeah. Yeah, very good film that one. Yeah. Yeah, I'll we'll have to look it up. It's an interesting industry. Like, I don't know where you, what are your views on where things are going then after, you know, I mean, I, I say after last year, but I think really this year we've got the same as last year, really. I don't think there's any change. And when I was talking to people a year ago, you know, the whole question of what's going to happen with cinemas was up in the air. Now it's, you know, clearly we're going to still have more trouble. I mean, you may not even care. I don't know. It may not, you know, obviously you care from an industry standpoint, but from a, from a, viewer standpoint what's your opinion on it do you see it totally um, shaking up the industry forever now i don't know like honestly i don't know it's it's, it's a hard one i we'll see how obviously like with the theaters and that we'll see how that works i mean that the theaters have become more blockbuster films anyway it's it's getting rarer and rarer to have the smaller films in the cinema unless they're a selected cinema um but i don't know streaming services seem to do well so, I don't know. And yeah, know, like that's I suppose what I mean is more the big, more the cinema experience. I mean, streaming's definitely not gonna. I mean, if anything, people are watching more stuff from home now, right? But I miss the. I mean, I live in a place oh. where there's no cinemas anyway. I have to travel, but yeah, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's gonna disappear because it's something we all like too much, isn't it? I hope so. I hope you're right. Yeah. I'd, I, I do wonder, it's, I think the, the ability to buy a massive TV now mm. um, and create your own cinema experience is a, lot, is, is a lot more of a reality than it ever was in the past, I think. Still not the same, though, is it? No, I would agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with you, but I, I put myself in the minority, I think. I don't know. I think there's a... Yeah, I love the cinema. I, go, I used to go all the time, so... Uh... No, I... I think it'll still be around for a bit. Still, uh, once once we get this COVID shit out of the way, then it'll be all sorted and, uh, you know, back in there once. You know, just, I think I think it'll be all right eventually. I hope what so. are your plans after all this? You, you plan to come back to Thailand, do stuff here? Are you happy uh, looking at the industry there or what? Well, I think I'm going to base myself in London no matter what now because I think because of the health stuff is a bit, I mean, 
that's the one thing with the COVID stuff and all that jazz when it came along. It does make you realise that in England, just getting free healthcare makes a difference. If worst ever mm -hmm. came to work. Um, so I think I'm going to base myself in London, but I still, I still want to work there. And the script that I've been working on, I want to shoot that in Thailand once, once I get funded. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm still going to travel back and forward in other places. Hopefully still want to go back to India and do more there as well. So yeah. Yeah. What did you, what did you do in, in I didn't know you'd shot and you shot some stuff in India, did you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jude, Jude uh, Wolko in uh, Bangkok, he got me on a film, Visha Rapun 2, sorry, with uh, Kamal Hassan and Shaker Kapoor. Shaker Kapoor directed Elizabeth with Kate Blanchett. So I shot that in Chennai and then up in the mountains. And then shot a Mitsubishi advert in India and a Wrigley's advert. So yeah, yeah. Like India. It's yeah, so do I. Did you get did you get any time to kind of see the country yeah. or you did, yeah, did you? Was, yeah, I loved it. And uh like we shot and where we shot was amazing. First time I shot in the blue city up in Jalpa. And uh yeah, it's mad. Yeah. Just and then uh Kodai up in the hilltop stations, like in the mountains, that was lovely. And then Chennai and then Bombay. Yeah, so it, it's it's a ride. It, it's cool, man. I like. Uh, do you know? It's funny. I do. I want to go back there. I want to spend a bit more time. I wish I'd done a bit more of India. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but I liked it. It was all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I. I mean, I love the place, and I've spent. I think I've travelled there for seven months, pretty much yeah. over. Like not all at once in different times, but people. Yeah, you find people either love it or they hate it there's not a lot of middle ground with india i've found yeah. people are never like yeah it's all right <laughs> like people are always like yeah i don't want to go there again but I, yeah it sounds like you've got a good spread of seeing different parts of it because yeah. it really varies man the mountains to the you know to the kind of down south areas and i mean i know i know certain people who've been like uh byron went there byron gibson he went there and he nearly died with food poisoning there um had a really like toxic food poisoning so yeah, it's one of them. But for me, I always loved it. And uh, I probably should have had food poisoning because I'd just eaten everywhere. But I was never sick once, so I've been lucky. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got it. I went in 96 and I got bad food poisoning. Or 91, I think it was, I got it bad. But when I when I went back last time was two years ago for business. And I didn't, I had no problem. I think it's a lot better 20 years on than it used to be. So I don't know when you were there, but yeah, it's, it, there's a lot less trouble with it now. Yeah, no, I can't wait. I want to. I, that, that's the one thing that the whole COVID thing, it's made you just want to travel. Like, I'm, I'm getting eager now. Now that now it's been a year back, I'm like, fuck, I want to uh, want to get on a plane and go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I know that feeling, mate. It's uh, it is like that. Hey, look, we've I covered most of the things I want to cover, but just a few quick fire kind of questions around, uh, I suppose, the. You know the people that have inspired you and the films you love, probably in that order. Who are the who are the who are the actors that, and and they may be the both the, the same anyway in the same movies. But who are the actors that inspired you and and still do and and beyond that? Yeah, what 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 are your kind of top movies that you you rate um, as classics? Yeah, okay. So the actors who inspire me, James Gandolfini is my favourite by far. Um, I'm obsessed with The Sopranos. Just if you go and watch him in each episode, the stuff he does is just unbelievable. Um, God rest his soul. Philip Seymour Hoffman, another one when I just just mesmerised when I watch him. Tom Hardy now, yeah. I think he's amazing. And then you've got the classics like uh, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Paul Newman, Steve McQueen. Um, yeah, Philip Seymour, uh, Dustin Hoffman, Mads Mikkelsen. I love watching him. If, if there's a Danish film called The Hunt, if if you watch his acting in that, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I know that. I've not seen it, but I know exactly. I know exactly the film you're talking about. Yeah, which keeps cropping up. So yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, so there for the actors um, and in actresses, uh, Judy Dench, Meryl Streep. Um, yeah, 
a whole bunch of I'm trying to think of, of women actresses. My mind just went blank. But yeah, no, with the with the blokes, I think James Gandolfini is probably. I just like watching how he deals because uh, if you watch him, he plays a sad, angry guy. But then when he goes happy, and he like that that this is the reason why I love The Sopranos so much is because you're rooting for the bad guy straight away. You know he's you know he's he's somebody who's murdered people. He's someone who who's like. A mafia guy, but he's all about his family. So, but when you watch him playing that character, he's uh, he's got this sad thing. But then when they make him happy, it makes you feel happy. And then it's because you're so used to him being down. And then mm-hmm. it then the change from that to anger. And if you watch, he, he does a lot with his breathing. That's why I like watching him because he, if you, if you just sit and watch him do you can really just see the change of emotion from in one scene it goes from one to another and it's so fucking talented so yeah i do uh he's probably my favorite i'll have to check some of that my brother was obsessed with the sopranos actually me too yeah i've probably watched every episode about 10 times at least i i still it's the thing which i still just stick on and watch and uh yeah um, films, my favourite films. Oh, so many. Uh, Angels with Dirty Faces, an old James Cagney film. Love that. Green Mile, um, Godfathers. I watched a brilliant film two days ago. Uh, Shop Shoplifters. It's a Japanese movie. So good, so good. Um, this was just uh, it's it won Khan about four or five years ago, I think. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I do remember, though. I remember the... Good film, yeah. Um, I don't know. I could go on. I'm trying to think with films. As... Name some of yours. My, my mind's blank. It's interesting. I've been watching, like, lots of... Not, not old movies, but I can't... When I watched movies recently uh, with my girlfriend, we go back and watch... I'm watching stuff that she would never normally watch and all of them she enjoys, like Scent of a Woman I watched recently. Okay. Watched recently. And I'm like, I just love that movie. And I, I couldn't really remember it all. I just remembered I loved his speech, his monologue in the last scene. And it's not last scene, yeah. in the last act. But um, so, you yeah, know, that. And then we went watch, back and watched um, uh, Casino the other day and really enjoyed that. And uh, why yeah. were we watching that? Because we'd watched something else. So... I mean, funnily enough, we watched Jaws as well not long ago. And it's really interesting watching Jaws with someone who um, has, you know, who it's, it's, a, it, it's an era behind and who would normally watch stuff with CGI. So my girlfriend's always like, oh, I love something. And she was like, wow, the effects are amazing because they just fit in with the context of the story. And, that you know, the, a lot of CGI stuff now, it's great, but a lot of it goes over the top, you know, and it, you instantly know it looks too real to be real. So... You don't no, believe I, it, you know. Yeah, a lot. Of it. It's not so good to watch. Um, I like the monologue in Jaws. The, the one where he scratches the board. Yeah. No. The when he's talking about where they've got the injuries and they like you know how, what is that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, now. actually, he's another good actor. Richard Dreyfuss is an actor I love as well. Because that's right. We went and then, you know, every time you watch one of these films, it links onto a new one, right? So you're like, oh, now let's watch Close Encounters because, you know, yeah. Spielberg and, and Dreyfuss again. So, yeah, all of those movies. Also, I'm probably my favorite movie. I mean, it's hard to have a favorite movie, but the first Alien movie is probably the movie that had the most impact on me as an individual. Right. And I can watch it over and over again. And just the, you know, they, I think they built that set in Birmingham in a big warehouse from memory. Um, and just the tension that was created with not seeing anything and pauses and, you know, all that kind of not needing anything except a guy in a suit that you might occasionally see right yeah. towards the end. You know, I, I watched it when I was about eight, I think, on my own. My, you know, my parents went off and, yeah. We're having a drink with the adults, and my, my uncle went, "Hey, watch this movie," and it always stuck in my head. But I like, yeah, that for me is probably one of my favourite, if not favourite, movies. I would say, love it. I can watch also. There's loads of cheese which I just love. I can watch that. I like 
romantic comedies. I, I can sit and watch like Notting Hill and stuff like that. I can watch that over and over. Love it. Uh, Top Gun, obviously amazing. Can't wait for Top Gun 2. Yeah, not not seen that since the since the 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 since the era of it being out. But uh, I probably but, should because it's all over it, Netflix at the moment. Every time you open Netflix, Top Gun's there, sir. Dirty Dancing, love Dirty Dancing. Patrick Swayze, amazing. Point Break, um, a lot of yeah. Do you know what it is? It's funny. The older I get, the more I, I can sit and watch absolute cheese when my brain doesn't have to work. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. No, I'm with you completely. I, I love. It depends what mood I'm in, but yeah, if I'm in that mood, which is yeah. just about turning off from the daily stuff, then it yeah. it really is more about just being able to be kind of drawn in and not have to kind of follow too much. What was I watching? Like, you know, pop, pop, pop music versus Led Zeppelin, you know, it's like there's a time for both, right? Crocodile Dundee the other day. Amazing. Love it. And then stuff like uh, Never Ending Story, I can still go and watch those old classics. Labyrinth, um, Bronx Tale, love that film. Carlito's Way, uh, and then that, there's that's some... one I was going to watch, Carlito. Play again. Oh, it's a brilliant film, isn't it? Brilliant. Oh, and one of my favourite, i tell you a film which I can watch over and over is uh, the Before Sunrise trilogy. Richard Linklater, Ethan Hawke and Julie, Julie Delpy. Love those films. Um, Dazed and Confused. Love that film still. Yeah. Yeah, loads. Loads. Awesome. Yeah, I feel like we're in one of the old uh, blockbuster video stores now, walking around. That's because most of the a lot of those movies would have been there on the on the shelves. <laughs> I worked at Blockbuster when I was younger. Did you? Yeah. There's yeah, probably yeah. A, there's probably a short movie to be made in that, Russell. Yeah. I don't know. Well, the, the, the... and I got a job in HMV because of the film Empire Records. True. I watched that film. Loved the film where they worked in a. There was that film, then there was a John Cusack film where where he worked in a record shop, and those two films. Then I went and got a job in, and it was shit. It was a terrible job. Hated it. Nothing like, uh, yeah. And then I worked in a cinema when I was younger. Yeah, that was good. So you're always um, always in that, always always in the sector, always in the space. Then so <laughs> just watching films. <laughs> I worked for a so. Lot of films. As well, the when that first came out, Love Film, I worked for them and uh, used to just, yeah, rinse, rinse the discs. Funny, you used to get them sent to you. It used to be Love Film. They used to send you, it was, uh, send you DVDs in the post and then you'd watch them, send them back. And once they received them, they'd send you another one. And, and back then that was like, wow. Yeah, right. Yeah. Making us sound old, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Getting there, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Hey, look, it's been, it's been good. We managed to piece a podcast together in two parts anyway. Where, if people want to find out more about you, where should they go? Where's, where, where do they find, find out more about Russell um, Banks? I don't know. Instagram, I guess. I'm lazy with all this. So. Do you know what? It's funny we're talking about oh, yeah. <laughs> subject. Lately, this I think the last year with social media, when I've had the most time I've ever had is when I've been the most not bothered about social media in my life. I'm like, Ugh. but yeah, Instagram. I put pictures on Instagram, um, some video clips, stuff like that. Yeah. And what's it? What's what's your what is it at Russell? I don't know what it. What, do you know what it is offhand? If not, I will find out yeah. and share it. Put Russell Jeffrey Banks or my name on there is always the uh, antagonist. That's right. At always the antagonist. I remember yeah. that. I always play a bad motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is hell. Locked in an attic for a turn or two. A cold, dark attic. Paying the pound of flesh. For 
been an horrible cunt. A vile cunt. An unpleasant cunt. Repulsive. Hideous. Offensive. Repugnant cunt. Nasty. Dreadful. But most of all, just an horrible cunt. You're not horrible. You're lovely. That's what my Sharon would say. Till I gave her a piece of chlamydia. I can forgive you. You do love me, don't you? You do love me. But I carried on. Because I'm a geezer, I'm a wide boy, that's what we do. I was fucked that night. Wasted. Out with the guys. That's when I know I'm in an alleyway with some bird. Noshing me off. Sucking my cock. Tried to fuck her. Wear a condom. Nah, don't do that. Wear a condom. I'll put it on you. Okay. Bend her over the car, just about to fuck her. And I am her boyfriend. What are you doing? What are you doing? Is that you, Tina? Are you down there? Gotta go, she whispers. Yeah. And I pulls out my trousers. And I get in a taxi. Spinning, still drunk. And I get home. in bed and I'll try and take my trousers off. Where you been? Shh. Go sleep. And I'll pass out. I'm asleep. And I'll wake up. Lights on. And I looks down and I've still got the Johnny on. So drunk, I didn't take the condom off, did I? Fuck. I wonder if she saw it. I can hear the bath. And I had a ghost on my back that night. I could feel it. And I walked to the bathroom. And I see her. My Cheryl. Lying there. Dead. Cut her own wrists. She obviously tried to take down my trousers and saw what a horrible cunt I was. And my Cheryl. She's blue. She's dead and blue. But so pretty. She's so pretty and she's so dead. She's dead. You do love me, don't you? Do now, it's too late. And that was that. No more Cheryl. I was always an horrible cunt. Lend us a tenner. Give us an aunt. You married. Well done. I hope you split up. Got two kids. Amazing. Wish you didn't. 
Well, she was lonely like me. Nice job. Congratulations. I hope you lose her. Stay at home like me. Stay on a doll. Be miserable. Waste your life too. But I got mine. Not long after. Remember Tina's boyfriend? You there? What you doing? He got me. Didn't even feel it. Just stood there and stabbed in the side. It was like, ah, pain. Can't breathe. Fall on the floor. Reebok Classics running away. I'm laying there on the floor in the road. Dizzy. Can't breathe. Strange thoughts. Eric Kantner. Crystal Palace. Kung Fu kick. Magic. Can't breathe. Dizzy. Am I dying? Ocean Coliseum. Day we caught the train. Best song ever. Best song of my life. What's going on? I can't breathe. I'm dizzy. Scared. First time I saw Cheryl. Beautiful. Yellow dress. Gorgeous. Knee eye boots. Dizzy. Scared. Can't see now. Can only smell the road. Think about my mum, my dad, everybody. I know I'm dying now. It got me. It's all black now. Can't hear anything now. Can't smell anything now. Just black. Then I'm here. You do love me, don't you? You do love me. Yeah, I love you. When it's too late. Sonny Barger, the President of Hell's Angel. This is 1095.